If you've ever recorded drums and not been able to get the type of drum sound that you want in the final mix, well, chances are you've made some kind of mistake during tracking. If you're not capturing good drum tracks at the source, it's gonna be impossible to make them sound pro in the mix. It's garbage in, garbage out. Now, I used to make all these mistakes too, and I learned the hard way, so I hope this video saves you all that trial and error and helps you instantly start getting better drum recordings. Now, the first dumb mistake that I see people making when it comes to tracking drums is using drums that sound bad. Now, it sounds so obvious, so simple, but it needs to be said because everyone, like everyone at some point or another, just ignores this and rushes through. But remember, experts are experts because they always do the basics. Now, when I'm talking about drums that just sound bad, there's a, there's a few factors that contribute to that. Number one, just cheap, crappy drums and cymbals. Like they just suck and they'll never sound good no matter what. But beyond that, you might be using the wrong size of drum. And I see this all the time too. A drummer or even a producer, let's say they want a really tight, punchy, aggressive kick drum, but then they're using this huge like 24 inch kick drum that's super deep like a cannon. Well, it's not gonna work. Or on the flip side, you want like a really deep, fat, heavy, loud snare sound, but you've got this really you know, thin three inch piccolo snare. And what I often find with inexperienced bands is that they bring in drums that are too big for the sound that they want and cymbals that are too big, but then their snare is often too small. So start paying attention to this stuff and testing different drum sizes. And then you've got to tune them and you've got to have fresh drum heads before you record. And trust me, it is well worth learning how to tune the drums as an engineer because most bands and most drummers that you work with, they won't have a clue how to do it. So don't make the mistake of recording bad sounding drums. Make sure that you choose the right drums, the right sizes, and have them tuned and sounding good in the room before you even start to mic them up. And if you wanna learn more about what are the right drum sizes, how do you tune them properly? Well, I'm gonna be going in depth on all of that in my upcoming live drum tracking workshop. There's gonna be a link in the description below. Just click that if you wanna sign up and learn more. Now, the next dumb mistake that I see a lot of people making is using too many mics on the kit. And I've definitely been guilty of this, especially when I started getting projects with bigger budgets and we could go to big fancy studios to record the drums. Like for example, the first Silverstein record that I engineered and produced, we went to a nice big studio. They had a big collection of mics and everything. And I felt like I just had to use them all because they were there. So I had like three mics on the kick, maybe even a fourth. I had like three mics on the snare, which I've never done before or since. I had all these multiple pairs of room mics everywhere and pretty much all of them sounded bad, but a lot of these extra mics I used, they had no purpose. There was no like thinking behind them. It was just like, they're there, so I, I might as well put them up. But here's what I've learned. Using multiple mics on something is not a substitute for using the right mic in the right spot. And that's how amateurs think. You know, they, they don't really know how to get the sound that they want. Maybe they don't even know what sound they're going for. And so as a substitute or like a safety blanket, they just put like three or four mics on it and hope that it works out later. Don't do that. You, you've got to have a reason and a purpose for every mic that you put up. And for metal and, and most rock tracks, like you probably don't need an outside kick mic even. Most of the time, I just have one mic inside the kick. That's all you need. For snare, just having a top and bottom, 57s, totally fine. You don't need to mic uh, the bottom of your toms, okay? Trust me, you just don't need to do that. And for overheads, you don't need like a lower pair and a higher pair. Stop the madness get back to basics, get the positioning right, and really nail simple, proven mic setups that will work every time before you go and start experimenting and, and trying to overcomplicate things. So related to that mistake of using too many mics is the next dumb mistake that I see people make, and that is using dumb overhead placements. So look, I don't care that back when the Beatles or Led Zeppelin were recording, they used to use three mics over the kit and capture a huge full picture drum sound. It doesn't work for modern music, certainly doesn't work for modern rock and metal. Ask yourself, what do you want out of your overhead mics? 95% of the time, the answer is that you want clear, focused, controlled cymbal sounds. You're not looking for a, a big sounding overall image of the drums. So if what you want is clear and focused cymbal sounds, well, don't put your overheads way up four feet above the cymbals. And don't use an XY pair in the middle either that isn't even pointing at the cymbals. And what I learned after a lot of trial and error is just to not ever try to capture a great sounding full picture of the drum kit in your overheads. Just try to capture great cymbals because if you try to capture the whole kit, well, it's pretty much always gonna sound bad unless you're in like a one of a kind drum room with a one of a kind drummer. Instead, you wanna mic your cymbals pretty close. 
use small diaphragm condensers, use a spaced pair of them, and another quick tip, point the mics at the edge of the cymbals, not towards the middle, or it's gonna sound really honky, versus pointing them at the edge where it's gonna, again, get away from the drum kit bleed in the overhead mics, and it's also gonna give you more of a polished kind of sheen to your cymbal sound. All right, the last drum tracking mistake that you don't wanna make comes down to the performance. And usually, the problem with the performance is that the drummer is not hitting hard enough or hitting hard enough consistently. And you know what I'm talking about. You know those drummers who every snare hit sounds different? You know, sometimes it's a hard rim shot, sometimes they miss that and it's just like barely there in the middle of the drum. Do not accept that. Make them do it again. And a lot of engineers focus so much on like the click track and making sure they're tight with their timing that they don't even realize that the drummer's like consistency and energy and strength is all over the place. And that's a mistake because you can fairly easily chop and edit and fix timing and quantize drums. But if you've got inconsistent hits on the snare drum or the cymbals, it's gonna be really hard to remedy that later on with editing or in the mix. So make sure you're paying attention to the energy and consistency that the drummer is playing with. And usually as the day goes on on a drum tracking session, even if it's just for one song, they tend to kind of relax and they stop hitting as hard, the adrenaline kind of goes away. But you as the producer and engineer have to pay attention to that and make sure that by the time you're getting to the end of the song or doing some final punch-ins that they're not hitting way softer. You've gotta make sure they keep the energy and consistency up. Personally, I'd rather have a take with strong, consistent hits with a little bit sketchy timing than have great timing and inconsistent energy. So those are the four mistakes not to make when you're tracking drums. And just to recap this for you, I'll say it in the opposite way. I'll say it as things that you should do. Number one, make sure the drums sound good in the room to begin with. Number two, make sure every mic that you're putting on the kit has a specific reason and purpose. Number three, mic the overheads for the sound you actually want, i.e. the cymbals, not the whole kit. And number four, make sure you get consistent power and energy out of the drummer. If you do all four of these things, it's gonna be a heck of a lot easier to get a powerful, punchy, awesome drum sound in the mix. Now, speaking of mixing drums, I've got this video right here on the four magic frequencies for mixing snare drums that works pretty much every single time. So if you want help with your snare sound, go ahead, check out this video.